Hey guys, I'm back. Cool, video number two. All right, so this is again the Blue Cat admin, or sorry, admin, <laughs> the Blue Cat IPAM interface. Um, so the first thing again is the default username and password is admin, admin. I haven't uh, modified that as of yet. Okay, actually, let me make this a little bit bigger, easier on the eyes. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about the different uh, tabs, very high level, because uh, I can go really in depth in uh, in every single tab here. But uh, for this uh, video, we're just going to go very high level, talk about the different uh, sections, and um, then we'll go from there. Okay, so the My iPad tab, okay? This is this tab allows you to quickly see multiple different things um, that you may have configured. So um, just uh, from the default, you can have you have the favorites, you have workflow requests, right? So favorites, um, if you may have a zone that uh, that uh, for your particular group um, um, in the in IPAM, uh, you may have specific um, uh, zones that you're focused on or specific networks that you're focused on. So you can you can add those particular uh, favorites there. Uh, workflow requests. So if you're an approver of a workflow, uh, workflow is you can set certain permissions on certain objects and you can allow other teams or set it up where other groups only have the ability to suggest changes right or request changes and you may have the ability uh, you may be part of a group or a person who is allowed to uh, approve or deny those changes for whatever reason so maybe they accidentally deleted a block or a network and you can look at that and say hey wait 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 wait, you don't want to do that i'm going to deny that um, or they just made a they want to add a, a resource record to a zone they may conflict with something so you have the ability to approve or deny that based on what changes they're making and then also some tasks and uh, much more so uh, what i can do here is i can add other widgets so for example um, there's tasks i can also for example um, add the uh, servers that i may be managing um, so i just click and drag right in there now, I don't have any servers added, but if I did, I could select it. I can see here it says no server, the configurations, Asia. There's also other, there's other configurations I've set previously. Um, and if I did have a server listed via SNMP, I can see it, what services are running, you know, the status of CPU, is it high, uh, memory utilization RAM, is it high, is it, uh, is it healthy? right and another information as well so there's a lot of different things i can do here it's a ipam tab is a is a good uh, quick um high level of everything that's going on things that i want to focus on when i when i log into the ipam okay so let's go to the ip space tab and the ip space tab right um you can see there's multiple different uh, sub tabs listed here but this is the area where i could add blocks and I can add networks um, within those blocks, right? So it's as easy as clicking new. A block is just a container um, when you, a container of, of, of networks within that block, okay? So for example, if I wanted to create a block, um, for example, slash 16, and I would place all my, you can have all these other options listed here, if I want to place all my, you know, 19 to 18 addresses, private addresses, non-readable addresses, um, here, right? And then I can create networks. Just makes uh, everything easy in terms of organization purposes. So um, let's say, for example, I wanted to add this network here. I just hit add. Oh. I'll just make life easy right now. I'm just going to do a slash 24, right? 
Okay, and then also I can add other information as well. I can add a customized gateway or can use the default gateway based on the size of the network, right? Um, and much more. I can set up DNS restrictions and watermarks, uh, watermarks specifically. So if you have, for example, a slash 24 and um, let's say uh, 200 of those networks or those IP addresses are utilized in some way, if you had set it, if you set this to, um, for example, 90%, then um, you would get a notification, an alert uh, sent to your email, for example. Okay, and then there's the network and you can also see um, the usage. And then also there's other, other UDFs that you can set. So these are the defaults, you can set other UDFs. Okay, and then here in this particular network, you have lease history, um, you have the DNSSEC tab, deployment options, deployment roles, and much more. We'll get into that eventually, but uh, we're not going to get into that today. It's a lot, there's a lot of stuff. So it manages both IPv4, IPv6. You have your DHCP settings. So for example, if you want to set up a, um, a DHCP option, um, for example, you can set up the DHCP match classes um, as an example. Um, there's also TCIP keys. IPv4 and 6 reconciliation, which is a, it's like a network utility that uh, does uh, discovery via SNMP, also ping, and discovers any um, IP addresses on the network that uh, may not be in use and gives you the option of uh, recovering and uh, putting them back into the uh, specific network to be reused. So that's that, that can be very helpful. And then there's also deployment options. Again, uh, we'll, we'll go into a lot of this uh, in the other videos. So the DNS tab, uh, this is where you would manage all your DNS. Um, um, your D DNS zones and your resource records, internal, external, right? Um, the first thing you do is you want to create a DNS view. And um, views is, uh, is used to um, potentially segment your internal and external DNS um, records, right? Um, you can set uh, match client uh, match clients and uh, specify and equals and specify which users are which uh, which uh, networks are able to query a specific view or query a specific zone based on certain equals that you specify. So, for example, if I want to create an internal view, I can go to add. It creates the view. And then from from there, once I go, once I click in that view, I can now create a zone, okay? And I can call it whatever I want. So for example, I can create the subzones as well as the uh, um, the TLD. So for example, if I wanted to create a a subzone called subzone dot example dot com, and I want to make it deployable, meaning uh, eventually. Um, right now, I'm just staging it, but uh, once I deploy, it'll be in, it'll be live, it'll be production. If this is not checked, um, the only time, one one of the times that you want to set, you don't want to check this if you're just staging it, right? So, for example, in Infoblox, you can't. There's no staging once you once you create a um, a resource record or a zone, it automatically gets uh, deployed or applied. Um, to your DNS services, but here you can stage it, meaning um, either um, you can select it and um, you can manually deploy, or you may have scheduled deployments. If you do have scheduled deployments and you don't want this to be deployed right away, just keep it unchecked. So even if you have scheduled deployments to deploy um, these records to your DNS server, this will not deploy until you're ready. Okay. Um, this is a lab, so nothing's scheduled to deploy, so I'm just going to add it and make it deployable. Okay, so in the internal view, I have .com, level domain, and then I have the subdomain example.com, right? And if I click on that, I can also, if I go to subzones, I can see subzone.example.com. And if I wanted to, I can create resource records in that particular uh, Subzone, right? Host records, CNAME records, text records, 
SRV MX and uh, other other records um, that are not listed here. You would go to the generic record. Okay. And then again, DNSSEC, deployment options, naming policies, and much more. Okay. Um, let's go to the devices tab. So in the devices tab, same idea here. You can uh, list, you can add devices here manually, uh, Kerberos Realms. You can set this up, TC keys. Um, you can add multiple TC keys devices um, that you may want to add, and also adding MAC addresses, creating MAC pools, and much more. The TFTP uh, groups, you can set TFTP groups here, and uh, you can set up uh, um, um, multiple options here as well. And then the service tab is, uh, this is a list of all managed and unmanaged DNS and DHP servers in IPAM. So um, I don't have any servers uh, right now. Um, I will in a future video, but here you can add servers uh, to this list. And again, it allows you to visualize, um, again, any managed DNS DHP servers that Blue Cat uh, has the ability to manage, as well as listing other servers that may be delegated for uh, a zone, okay? So it gives you that ability to visualize this. So for example, you may have a, um, an InfoBlox, right? Something that's not Blue Cat, a uh, bind server, an InfoBlox server in the cloud, in Azure as an example. So you can add that server in this, in the list of servers, and then you can delegate or direct um, queries for a particular zone to the authoritative server. So there's a lot of things you can do here. It gives you a lot of visibility, which is great. You can also set up scheduled deployments. So this only applies to managed servers. Okay, so you can schedule deployments. So um, you can set it where every five hours deploy any changes that have been made in IPAM. Okay, you can set it every five minutes, every minute, or every 24 hours, whatever makes sense, rather than manually deploying these changes every single time. Okay, you can also create service groups. So if you have you have a list of servers that have the same configurations, you can create a group for them. So when you apply, when you add new uh, options or settings, you can apply it to the entire group instead of manually applying the same setting to every single server. And if you're an enterprise uh, organization, um, you may not, you don't have time to apply these changes to every single server because you may have hundreds of servers. Okay, and if I go to groups, which is the second last tab here, um, you can create different types of uh, groups, tag groups, device types, so you can specify locations, right? Um, and this just helps you organize the data, um, helps you um, locate um, objects in IPAM, makes, makes um, the ability to uh, locate data or organize your data much easier. Okay, and we'll talk more about the different uh, tag groups that you can create or um, how, how they apply. Uh, and talking about, you know, making life a lot easier, there's also on the right-hand side at the top here, there is a search functionality. So you can search for anything. You go to the band search, uh, you can be more, um, more specific in what you're looking for. But uh, this allows you to search, again, for anything. So, for example, if I know I... I know I'm going, I'm looking for a specific IP address, or hey, I just created a, um, a domain called example.com, but I can't remember exactly where it is because I manage so many different zones. I can just type example.com and there it is, right? So I can see if there were any resource records, I could see that information. Okay, if I go to the details tab as well, I can see a lot of information about. Um, you know, uh, change requests, you can set that up here. You set certain permissions here. Tags, we're talking about tag groups. You can sign many different tags here. Access rights, you know, who has access um, to example.com, maybe in a very important domain. I don't want many people to modify it, right? And I also have the ability to see the audit trail. So if I wanted to see exactly who created that zone and when, right, I can see it was the admin because I wasn't as admin at this time. 
there's a transaction number. Um, I can actually go into the operation here, zone was added, and I can see exactly what was done. So I can see the .com, the subzone, subzone example.com should use a different uh, name instead of subzone. Um, and everything's listed here. And then, for example, if I wanted to, hey, you know what, I made a mistake. I don't want to, um, I want to uh, revert changes back. There's a way of reverting that, and I'll show you really quickly how to do that. But, um, so if I go to the administration tab, okay, in the administration tab, there's a lot of different options here, right? We have global settings. We have version management. This is really important. And uh, I'll show you how, how to do this as well in, in a future video. But version management allows you to manage the um, any patches, updates to your IPAM here. And any managed DNS and DHCP servers, you can manage the uh, patches, right? Uh, security patches, software updates from here. Right, you would apply the patches, and then you would, um, or you would upload the patches in this section, and then you would apply the uh, patches to every single managed DNS DHCP server um, um, from one central location. So it makes life a lot easier rather than, you know, SSHing in every single server and, and applying updates manually. Um, again, if you're in a, a large enterprise organization. Um, there has to be a better way in the risk. <laughs> so, and again, this can be done. I mean, uh, I know I'm talking mostly about Blue Cat right now, but um, this also can be done through uh, Infobox as well. Okay, so again, there's a lot of different things here trust uh, relationships and then user management, uh, access, user groups, um, access rights, uh, authenticators. So, if you want to authenticate, in IPAN via LDAP or uh, you know Radius, whatever you can you can do that here. You can see who's logged in. Um, additional user security in addition to what you have in AD, as an example. Um, data management, managing your database, um, migrations, uh, visualization of DHCP, um, which is very useful. Um, and then there's the uh, monitoring services using SNMP. Reconciliation settings, uh, tracking, this is really valuable. So, for example, if I go to the event list, you know, um, there's nothing there for the event list, but uh, <laughs> it, let's go to the uh, transaction history specifically, uh, which uh, gives me a list of every, every single user and what they've done, um, including any type of uh, API uh, related uh, um, um, changes that may have been made. So I can see here, the only changes that have been made is that uh, configuration was added three times, right, by the same user. Um, I can see uh, the block was a block was added, okay, a network was added within the block, and a DNS view and a zone was added. And this is everything we did uh, on the in this video today, right? So if I were to go if I were to go to the V4 network, I can see exactly which networks were added, right. Um, so that's that's very useful information. Now, for example, in this case, hey, I added a particular network and I wasn't supposed to. One of the cool features here in the tracking option is I can do a data restore. Um, or actually, sorry, that's if I were to delete it. So um, if I were to go to the IP space for, for a moment and let's say I delete this network. And guess what? I wasn't supposed to. So let me delete it. I say yes. Okay, so I deleted it. Oh no, right? What would you do? Let's say if you were on Windows right now and you deleted a, a network, <laughs> what would you do? Uh, I'm pretty sure your answer is going to be uh, to manually recreate it, right? Um, so if I go to data restore, this is kind of cool. I can see that the network was deleted. I can see who deleted it, which uh, sometimes is hard in, in solutions like Windows Server. And time transaction ID, right? I can I can go in there and see exactly what was deleted, right? And in this case, what I want to do is I want to restore it. You know, I don't want to I want to fix what just happened there. So I just go to Do you want to continue data restoration of the following? Yes, I do. Hit yes, 
and you are done. So if I go back to the IP space, there it is. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, again, I'm gonna talk about a lot. This was very high level, right? Um, there's a lot of different stuff here. Um, really quickly as well, if uh, you know, we talked about in, in, the, in one of the first videos about configurations and what that is. Um, also, if you click on the question mark, wherever you are, it'll give you uh, help in terms of you know what that particular section of the um, of the GUI is. So, because we were in that section, we can see information about the uh, IP4 block information, right, and what that means. Right. So, for example, if I was in the um, in the devices tab and I wasn't really sure what all this stuff meant, I could just click on the uh, little question mark here, and it gives me information about the configuration Mac tab. Right. So that's that's also very useful when you uh, need to find information. I'm not, not sure where to look. There you go. All right, guys. Well, uh, here's the second video I've created. Uh, to very talking very high level about uh, the interface uh, next few videos i'm going to talk about i'm going to set up a server and uh, um, um, a dns and dhb server i'm going to deploy and um, i'm going to show you some uh, tricks on how to do certain things in terms of deployment so that should be a fun video okay thanks for watching talk to you then